This conference will now be recorded. All right, shouldn't be too long this morning. Uh, just a little edification that, you know, the most I gave me last night uh, before I went to bed. Um, and then we're going to pray in and uh, continue about the day. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, we're going to be covered from, uh, from Jeremiah 38, something that the most I showed me. Um, when it comes to Jeremiah, you know, of course, he, he's one of the, uh, uh, what the, what people would say is a major prophet, although, you know, the Bible doesn't, um, it doesn't distinguish between prophets as far as major and minor. Um, but when you look at Jeremiah during the time that he was prophesying, he was, <clears throat> he was the last prophet to prophesy before we actually went into the Babylonian captivity. Uh, if you read on um, the book of Jeremiah towards the end, you actually read uh, the account of um, um, Babylon coming in, uh, you know, also us being attacked by the Chaldeans um, and, and being taken away. And Jeremiah was actually there during that time. Uh, and the king at that time was uh, was Zedekiah. <clears throat> Uh, the king at that time was Zedekiah, right? So um, we're going to read Jeremiah 38 and 39 because even though Jeremiah, of course, he's, he's going to be a part of this story, he's not the one that I want to pay attention to. Uh, there's a, there is a servant, an Ethiopian eunuch by the name of Ebed Malek, Ebed Malek, and I want us to pay attention to him. You know, of course, this fast, um, it is fo the focus is on deliverance of of Yahsi, right? And to get a true understanding of what that means, as far as who Yah has chosen, who has a desire and a heart towards Him, like we was talking about last night. And that's what the important thing is um, in the hour that we're in right now is to have a desire towards Him. And this is this is outside of um, this is outside of of fleshly bloodline right uh, because it's all about taking on his blood it's all about taking on his dna and his character um and so when we look at ebed malek we're going to see something here uh and we're going to see because of of his righteous heart he actually found or he actually received uh deliverance uh even during the captivity and this was one of the last things that jeremiah prophesied right uh, before we went to captivity, it's a it's a beautiful account. Uh, so I just want to take a look at it so we can we can get in a mindset of man how gracious the Most High is when you are a servant to Him, right? But uh, let's check it out. So we're gonna come from Jeremiah thirty eight, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll pray in um, after we, uh, we read the story. Okay. All right. It says uh, then uh, Shephatiah, the son of Matan. And Gedaliah, the son of Peshur, and Jukal, the son of uh, Shalemiah, and Peshur, the son of Melchiah, heard the words of Jeremiah, heard the words that Jeremiah had spoken unto all the people, <clears throat> saying, Thus saith the Lord, he that remaineth in this city shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. But he that goeth forth to the Chaldeans shall live, for he shall have his life or pray and shall live. Thus saith the Lord, the city shall surely be given into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. Therefore, the princess said unto the king, we beseech thee, let this man uh, be put to death, for thus he weakeneth the hands of the men of war that remain in this city and the hands of all the people in speaking such words unto them, for this man seeketh not the welfare of this people, but the uh, hurt points to a lot of, of what Israel is going on with today in that when we prophesy certain things concerning Torah, when we're walking in the instruction and the character of the Most High, how some people are going to see that as an attack, right? And they're going to seek uh, to uh, diminish you or put you down, um, to silence you in a way. Uh, but you have to understand it's because of these people's heart being far away from the uh, from the Most High, far away from Hamashiach, 
And this is what we have to continuously pray for. Uh, but we also have to continue to walk in what Most High has purposed us for, uh, regardless of this. You know what I'm saying? Understand that Jeremiah is about to be, or he's being put in prison, so to speak, to be put to death. Um, but it still does not stop him from prophesying what the Most High has put on his heart. And we have to have that same mindset today. Not everybody is going to receive it. These are his own people, right? And they're saying because he doesn't look after the welfare of the people, we're going to put him to death. When what he's prophesying is for is how they can receive deliverance, <laughs> but they don't want to hear it. Uh, this is a constant theme throughout the Bible, right? We've seen this with Noah preaching for 120 years or, or you know, building an ark and, and telling the people judgment is coming and then nobody understands it until it's actually at the front door. And that will uh, uh, unfortunately be the, um, unfortunately that's gonna happen to some people, right? But let's keep it going. It says, then Zedekiah the king said, behold, he is in your hand for the king is not he that can do anything against you. So Zedekiah at this point is pretty much uh, just giving in to the princess saying, what can I do, right? If y'all want to throw him in, in prison, put him to death and do what you got to do. What can I do, right? So Zedekiah, even though he is the king, he's not showing forth any type of uh, leadership or um, he's not making a decision for himself, right? He's just like, man, y'all do what y'all going to do, right? And this is where Ebed Malek is going to come into play, right? All right, uh, verse six, it says, then took they Jeremiah, and cast him into the dungeon of Malchiah, the son of uh, Hamalek, that was in the court of the prison. And they, and they let down Jeremiah with cords. And in the dungeon, there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. Now when he bed Malek, the Ethiopian, one of the eunuchs, which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king, uh, the king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin. Ebed-Melech went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, My lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah, the, the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon, and he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no bread in the city. <clears throat> then the king commanded Ebed-Melech, the Ethiopian, saying, Take from hence thirty men with thee. And take, uh, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he died. So Ebed-Melech took the men with him and went into the house of the king under the treasury and took thence old cast clouts and old rotten rags and let them down by cords to the dungeon to Jeremiah. And Ebed-Melech the Ethiopian said unto Jeremiah, put now these old cast clouts and rotten rags under thine armholes uh, under the cords, and Jeremiah did so, and so drew up Jeremiah with cords and took him up out of the dungeon, and Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Then Zedekiah the king sent and took Jeremiah the prophet unto him into the third entry that is in the house of the Lord. And the king said unto Jeremiah, I will ask thee a thing, hide nothing from me. Then Jeremiah said unto Zedekiah, if I declare unto thee, will thou not surely put me to death? And if I give thee counsel, will thou not hearken unto me? So Zedekiah the king swore secretly to Jeremiah, saying, As the Lord liveth that made this soul, I will not put thee to death, neither will I give thee into the hand of these men that seek thy life. Then said Jeremiah unto Zedekiah, Thus said the Lord, the, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, that thou wilt surely go forth unto the king of Babylon, uh, unto the king of Babylon's princes, then thy soul shall live, and this city shall not be burned with fire, and thou shalt live in thine house. But if thou wilt not go forth to the king of Babylon's princes, then shall the city be given into the hand of the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and thou shalt not escape out of their hand. Zedekiah the king, uh, and Zedekiah the king said unto Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews that are fallen to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hand, and they mock me. <clears throat> but Jeremiah said, they shall not deliver thee, obey, I beseech thee, the voice of the Lord, which I speak unto thee, so it shall be well unto thee, and thy soul shall live. But if thou refuse to go forth, this is the word that the Lord has showed me. All right, so when we look at it bad, my left, right, this is what's so beautiful about this whole story. 
of course, Jeremiah continued to prophesy into, into Zedekiah, but Yvette Malek, when he heard about what happened to Jeremiah, right, he took it upon himself to go to the king, right, to receive instruction or uh, to go to the king to beseech, right, the king to deliver Jeremiah. Like he understood that he's an Ethiopian man, right, but he is a servant in the king's house. <laughs> And so he understands at this time, man, yo, they've done evil to Jeremiah. Man, we got to go get him. But even in that, even in that, that sense, even though he knows that Zedekiah, he gave the okay for him to be put into the, into the dungeon, for Jeremiah to be put into this dungeon, right? He still knows in his mind, man, I have to go to the king, right? I still have to go to the king. I can't take it upon myself just to go free Jeremiah. Let me go and receive instruction from the king and then we can go get him. Right, so he goes to the king. He receives the instruction to go get the uh, go get the thirty men. Right, they got the the rags tied them together, and they pulled Jeremiah out. Right, and then he came as Zedekiah and he prophesied. But when you look at the heart of of Ebed Malet, and it's so beautiful because in his mind he wanted to do right, but he still had the heart to go to the king. He still had the heart to keep order. Right. And within that, that's the understanding that we should have. That man, even though we want to do right, every single day we want to do righteousness, but do we have the mind to go to the king to receive the instruction on how to do it, right? On how to put it into action, on how to work it, right? And this is what Ebed Malek understood. His name, the name Ebed Malek literally means servant to the king, right? And he was that through and through. He served the king, but in his heart, he served the true and living God, right? He served the true king. And so he understood that when it was evil going on, that something needed to be done, but he went to the king to get that instruction. Man, it's just, it's just powerful, right? Um, man, it was something else I wanted to point out. But you know what? Hey, let's get to, uh, uh, for time's sake, let's get to uh, Jeremiah 39. Jump over to Jeremiah 39. I want us to read um, this last portion here concerning uh, concerning Ebed Malak. Right? Because at this point, Babylon has already invaded. Chaldeans have also uh, attacked the city, right? And and pretty much everybody is being is being taken away, as we know happened. Um, you know, when they came in, they took all the all the wise men, all the prophets, anybody who was um, who was a strong warrior. Right, they took them and brought them unto Babylon. Uh, all the all the ones who were poor, they left in the city, um, and they left them to to pretty much till the ground and keep the harvest and everything like that, so that they could still reap uh, from the land. Uh, and so that's why they left them there. Uh, and of course, you know, at the time that they left them there, they were also being persecuted as well. All right, but I want us to read about uh, Ebed Malek and his end because this is one of the last prophecies. Um, of Jeremiah, right, to uh, to the people, or definitely to the devil. Right? Um, we'll start at, so 39 and verse, right, 39 and verse 15, all right? It says, now the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the prison, saying, go speak to Ebed Malek, the Ethiopian, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will bring my words upon this city for evil and not for good, and they shall be accomplished in the day before thee. But I will deliver thee in that day, saith the Lord, and thou shalt not be given into the hand of the men of whom thou art afraid. For I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword, but thy life shall be for a prey unto thee because thou hast put thy trust in me, saith the Lord, right? Because you, because Ebed Malek understood who this prophet was and that he was a man of God. And he saw the evil that was being done. And he sought out the king to go and rescue Jeremiah, to bring him up out of that dungeon. The most High witnessed it, he saw it. And so when destruction came, he says, you have received deliverance because of your heart towards me, right? And now I remember what I was going to say before. The most important thing about Ebed Malek, we could look at this in a spiritual sense. He was a eunuch, right? And we know what a eunuch is. A eunuch is a person who, you know, 
pretty much doesn't have the ability to uh, bring forth a seed, right? If you're if you're a unit for the king, just put it, <laughs> you know, keep it PG, right? But the purpose of having a unit in your service, if you're the king, is so that that unit is not going to go after your uh, after your wife or at this time after your wives, right? If you had concubines or anything like that, you wouldn't have to worry about them being distracted or taken away or drawn away by fleshly lusts, right? Um, because they they could not bring forth, see, they, they couldn't do it. And so that was the purpose of having a eunuch in your service. But when you look at the eunuch in a spiritual sense, it is a person that own, their only responsibility or their only mindset is to serve the king. Right? They don't have any desire to go outside of the king's service to seek their own desires. Right, They're only focused on doing what's best for the king's house. This is what Ebed Malek was doing. Right, Even though Zedekiah wasn't, I mean, he wasn't the, he wasn't the greatest king. Right, He wasn't one of the ones that we had that we could say, uh, um, you know, did right in the eyes of the most high. Right. But Ebed Malek still looked out for his house and understanding that the words that Jeremiah was speaking came from the Most High, right? He was still looking out for the king's house. He still had that heart to serve, right? To be a servant to the king and ultimately a servant to the Most High, right? And this is the understanding that we have to have in a spiritual sense. We should be eunuchs when it comes to serving in the king's house, not desiring anything else outside of what our responsibilities are to him, right? Knowing that he will give us all things inside of the house, right? He'll protect you, he'll cover you, he'll feed you, give you substance, water, bread. Like he, you're gonna have everything that you need inside of the house, but you shouldn't have to go outside to seek something else. That shouldn't be your desire. You shouldn't be led or drawn away to anything else. And that was the purpose of a unit that they wouldn't have that, they wouldn't have those desires, right? Um, now, of course, they can still be corrupted. They can still lie, cheat, still do all those things like that. Um, but if you take away just that basic instinct to want to, um, you know, be with a woman, have kids, things like that, these things were, were taken away from them so that they could just serve the king, so that they could just be before him. And that's the mindset that we have to have in a spiritual sense. You have to be um, a eunuch, so to speak, for the kingdom, right? You have to be that for the kingdom. It should only be a desire to serve in the king's house and to do uh, what's best for the house of the king, right? And so his name was fitting and he received deliverance because of his obedience. And I just thought that was a, a really good story. Um, anybody got anything to add on that? If not, we'll go ahead and pray. Anybody got anything to add, period? Um, we just got to stay focused, man. It, it's a time of redemption. And uh, man, we just got we got to stay focused on because he will deliver us if we're obedient, right? He certainly will. All right, anything at all? Anything at all? I know some. I know some people working. So, um, if not, we'll go ahead and pray this thing again, y'all, and uh, uh, bid each other a good day. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get. I'll be out. Just thank you. Uh, we praise you and glorify you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Hallelujah, Abba Yah. We just pray right now that you would solidify this day, that you would establish us on this day, that you would establish your people. Uh, that you will continue to show us how we can be redeemed. You will continue to show us how we can be more like you, how we can walk in your character, how we can serve, how we can serve you, how we can uh, 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 be a witness in the king's house, how we can be a, a pillar in your house, how we can be someone that you depend on, that you trust in, that you would call friend to send forth your word through, that you would, you would put your words in us to prophesy to others. You will put your words in us to preach to others, to testify to others so that they may know your glory. We just pray right now that you would continue to gather us into your hand, that you would continue to lift us up. You will continue to bring us out of that miry pit. You will continue to bring us out of 
that dungeon, that place of darkness. Um, you, you would lift us up and bring us into your court. You would bring us to you to receive a word, to receive instruction, to receive our guidance. Uh, we just pray that you would guide our footsteps on this day, um, that you would, you would deliver us from any foul thoughts, that you would uh, take away from us uh, um, any any fleshly lust, any any desires that are outside of you, anything that would lead us away from you, we ask that you would sever those ties. We ask that you would cut those things in half, that you would sever uh, the very yokes that have us bound to any form of wickedness right now, that you would break any shackle. We pray right now uh, that generational curses continue to be broken, whether it be alcoholism, whether it be fornication, whether it be the spirit of adultery, whether it be the spirit of, of lying or backbiting, the spirit of jealousy or envy, any of these things that have traveled to us through blood, any of these things that, that we have received uh, from our forefathers, from our ancestors, grandmothers, grandfathers, we just pray right now that you would sever those ties as we seek you. We pray right now that you would continue to clean us up, that you would wash us so that we would be acceptable in your sight that you would deliver us uh, uh, from the uh, from the wickedness um, that is within this flesh, that you would deliver us from ourselves. Give us the ability and the strength to mortify the deeds of this flesh, denying what it wants and letting the spirit have what it wants, letting the spirit uh, uh, eat the spiritual, the spiritual bread, drink of the spiritual water so that it may increase and that we may decrease in the flesh. Let you feel our houses, let your presence fill wherever we are. Uh, um, let your word go forth today. Uh, we just thank you and we praise you and we glorify you just for who you are. We thank you for the sacrifice uh, that was made on Calvary. We thank you for the blood that was shed. We thank you uh, uh, for the punishment that you endured on our behalf while we were yet sinners so that we can have true deliverance. We thank you right now that you you died, but you rose, showing us that we have the promise of eternal life if we just seek after you. If we appear before you like you are, um, that you will give us our reward, our eternal reward, which is to live forever and dwell amongst the king and to see the father uh, like he is, who he is. Let us desire and seek the throne only today. Uh, let us lift up holy hands to you in our time of weakness. Let you be our strength. Uh, we just pray all these things in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach. We give you all honor and all glory knowing that you are everything give us the the, the spirit of, of of humbleness right now all the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit put within us and let them come forth uh, uh to show forth your praise uh in this hour let us not be uh angry let us not be anxious for anything um we just ask right now that as the the as your your spirit reveals things in us throughout this fast. As we have taken away from the body, whatever is revealed, let us offer it up for you uh, uh, to be burnt up on the altar, to be sacrificed, to no longer walk in those things again. Give us an understanding, give us wisdom and knowledge of what we are supposed to do in this hour, what we're supposed to do going forward as we come closer to your Passover. Uh, to the day that you told us to memorialize where you skipped over us giving us time to perfect ourselves uh, to receive the kingdom we ask for that instruction now we ask that you would give us that guidance now and that we would receive it that we would not doubt in your word uh, that we would not stray away from your word that we would not diminish uh, anything that you would give us uh, in this hour that we would take everything as edification we would take it as our strength and that we will walk in it holy. Let our, our faith be established. Let it let it be rooted in your Torah and your instruction. Uh, make us a walking Torah. Make us make us a walking uh, uh, instruction, a walking epistle of how to seek you, of how to receive your deliverance, your protection, your hedge. Uh, let us be that in this hour. Uh, we just thank you. We cannot thank you enough just for what you are doing uh, with your with your children. Uh, we just pray for the continued deliverance of your seed, of the seed that you have planted, the seed that, that will bear forth good fruit uh, for everyone to be nourished by. Uh, we just pray for the continued deliverance of your people, of your children. Um, let us deliver a word to all those who are lost uh, when the time comes, and we pray that they hearken unto your voice. Uh, we pray that these words reach each and every person, wherever they may be, scattered across the four corners of the world, let it go out and let your words enter into their ears. Let them be brought to a place of, of prayer and meditation and fasting 
Let us all do this uh, in order to become one with you, uh, in order to become closer and closer to the body, knowing that you, Yahushua Hamashiach, are the head of the body. Uh, we just thank you and we love you. We give you all praise, honor, and glory. Protect us today, guide us today, lead us. Uh, and we thank you for this day. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, and we will continue with this fast in all strength, uh, giving you all praise for what you are providing to us, the edification that you are giving us. Thank you. We love you. In the name of Yahshua Hamashiach, we pray these things. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, family. Um, I'm going to post this short message to uh, uh, to the channel as well. Um, I appreciate y'all being able to make it. Does anybody have anything or anybody want to pray before we exit out? Um, I know some of y'all at work, so since if not, we'll go ahead and, uh, and bid each other farewell, and I will see y'all at, it's going to be 7 o'clock, I think, 7 o'clock tonight, and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get some last-minute edification, and then we'll go ahead and end the fast, all right? So uh, nobody has anything, man. Y'all have a blessed day. Um, stay with the Most High, and uh, I'll see y'all tonight. All right, shalom. Shalom, everyone. Shalom, everybody. Thanks a lot, Mark.